Okay, so hello everyone. Today I will present you uh, this topic, which is enhancing software safety in system intensive environments. So applying system theoretic process analysis, also known as STPA. Um, <clears throat> okay, so for this presentation, of course, I will uh, tell you what is this barbaric name behind system theoretic process analysis. Um, okay, but before <clears throat> before I talk about the STPA, I have to tell you about STEMP. So STEMP is System Theoretic Accident Model Process. And as the name say, it's really just a model. And how does it work? It's a very simple feedback control loop, a feedback loop, sorry. And everything is modeled as is everything is a controller or a controlled process. And a controller can be anything that has a process model. So what we call process model can also be algorithm. So basically anything that has some logic in it and that will send control actions to the control process. And the control process will send back some, some feedback. So that's how you get this. Uh, control loop. Uh, and originally, this was meant to make uh, to to this to let's say describe some accidents in in aviation, but I will come to that a bit later. But basically, the whole idea behind this, this uh, model is that it states that there are four types of unsafe control actions. So these control actions that are sent from the controller to the control process. Uh, the first the first way of um, that a control action can be unsafe is that if the control action is not sent at all okay so i have the controller uh, the action is not sent so um, i will talk about like let's say aviation uh, examples but uh, then i will i will go back to it a bit later but first i just want to to give you the the idea where it comes from this this methodology so for example uh, if i have uh, an aircraft that is taking that is uh, landing and I, I press the the, the brake but that the the command is not sent to the from the brake pedal to the actual brakes then this can potentially be unsafe then there's the uh, type where the the control action is sent but it is unsafe. So if I take again the same example with the with the aircraft, so we are taking off this time, and I didn't press the braking pedal, but still some command is sent that to the brakes that it should brake. So again, like if I'm in the taking off uh, takeoff situation, this can be unsafe. So these are the two main ones, let's say, and then you have two other types, which are uh, when the control action is sent but too early or too late or if it's applied too soon or applied too long. Okay, but basically that's the main that's the main thing about stamp. This is the model. And uh, if I take a very simple system here, so just, I don't want to go too much in details, but basically on the left you have some kind of computer and on the right in the orange you have some uh, braking system. So in this case, I can model the, the computer as just one box here in, in blue on the right. You can see this is the controller and the braking system would be the control process. OK, so that's basically how you model things in, in STEM, just to make it simple. And finally, we have STPA. So STPA is what we're going to talk about today. And STPA is a methodology. It's a hazard identification method and based on stem so you can see here the four step four steps sorry and stamp so the what we talked just before is just the step two basically of this whole methodology that we go we're going to go through today uh, so the first step of this this methodology is to define the purpose of the analysis which means that like, define some boundaries so what what do we study and in which purpose uh, the second step is this to model our actual system. So in our case, we'll see. I will take AVA as a as a case study. 
Uh, the third step is to identify the unsafe control actions. So what I just mentioned before, okay, so we have some control actions that are sent from the controller to the control process, and we try to identify which one are potentially unsafe. And the last step is to identify the loss scenarios, meaning the scenarios that can, which are the scenarios that possibly can lead to these unsafe control actions. Uh, okay, just again, like just it's just to put a little bit of context, and then I will jump into into Ava. But just to give you a little bit of context about why this methodology exists in the in the first place. Uh, today, in aviation, in aerospace, all the accidents or all the safety assessments are made based on they are failure based. Okay, so basically we take some components of the aircraft or the system and we calculate what is the probability of failure of this uh, of these components and if they fail then we try to mitigate the the possible uh, issues okay just to sum it up quickly but what is stpa is trying to point out to highlight is that many many accidents can happen even though there are no any there are no failures at all in the system uh, just the design itself can can be wrong. So just here a small example to, to try to, to demonstrate what I'm saying. So we have a very, very old aircraft, so uh, Airbus 320. And in it, there's a very simple algorithm that prevents the pilot to, to turn on the reverse thrust. So reverse thrust is like, you know, this you have this engine that are providing thrust. And when you are braking very, very hard, you want the engines to, to provide the thrust in the opposite direction just to brake a bit harder. But of course, you want to avoid this when you are flying. Because if you would do this when you are flying, you would have big, big issues. Like you would completely destroy the aircraft. So to avoid that, there is a very simple algorithm within the aircraft uh, to prevent this, which is that the, the aircraft must understand that is he is it is on the ground before you can activate this. And how does he know this? Uh, the first condition is that uh, uh, there must be at least 6.3 tons on each on the main landing gear strut. Okay, so if there if there is at least 6.3 tons, then the aircraft knows it's on the ground. Or the other condition would be that the wheel must be spinning at at least 130 kilometers per hour. Okay, so if these conditions are not fulfilled, then you cannot activate the 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 river thrust to prevent to activate it when when you are flying. And now there is a very interesting study case from the flight 2904 uh, from Lufthansa. So it was in Warsaw in 1993, and at this time there was very bad bad uh, weather conditions and uh, there was a lot of crosswind uh, so what happens when you are when there's a lot of crosswind then you put the aircraft a bit on the bias uh, sorry on, on the side like this to compensate the the wind and you land with only one landing gear on the on the runway okay it's just to compensate a little bit from from the crosswind so then the first condition is not met because all the landing gears don't, don't have in the weight of the aircraft, okay? There's only one main, uh, one landing gear has the weight of the aircraft. And the second condition that can be met to, to activate the, the reverse is the speed of the wheels. But there was wet runway because of the, the bad weather, and so there was some hydroplane. And so therefore the pilots couldn't activate the, the, the reverse thrust for nine seconds. And so basically that's the little animation you can see on the on the right. I hope it's uh, working correctly. I know sometimes when you're sharing the screen, it's not working. But okay, the idea is that the pilots couldn't uh, activate the reverse thrust for, for nine seconds. And because of course there was some bad weather condition, they landed very, very far on the on the runway. So you can think maybe it's not such an issue. But <clears throat> this is what happened in, in the end, okay? Because they couldn't break hard enough. They overshoot the, the, the runway. They, was, they couldn't break as hard as, as they planned. So one passenger, one passenger died, the co-pilot died, and 51 people were seri seriously injured. And the question is what failed, okay? There was the, the engines were working, the, the brakes were working, everything was working as, uh, it was supposed to, but 
just this there was a flow in the design of the of the aircraft okay so that's where stpa comes from to try to cover and to uh, reveal this kind of design flaws this is the main line db behind it not to treat the accidents as a failure problem but as a control uh, problem so yeah sorry it was a bit long uh, context but it was just to explain to you where where does it come from and now i want to try to show you that we can apply it in it and in software development uh, the same uh, safety uh, methodologies and i will try to show you with the with the ava project so <laughs> of course we didn't really do it for the for the ava project so what i will show you now is just something that i made up quickly uh this week just to to have some materials to to, to support the the presentation but uh, I think it wor it's working uh, quite well. Okay, so we can start. We can start with it. So the first step of the of the STPA is to define the purpose of the analysis. Okay, so what do we study and what <clears throat> what do we want to to to, to study? Uh, so in our case. Of course, we study AVA, okay, so like the full system. And the first thing that we have to do is to identify what are the potential losses to our system, okay? Because now I realize that I didn't define what is safety in the context of, of IT, where we just have to define who are our stakeholders. So in this case, this is AVA, is our main stakeholder for the, for the analysis. And we try to imagine what are the, mm, losses that that can happen to the to the stakeholders what has value to them so the first loss would be loss of aircraft operational safety because of our system or loss of data integrity loss of system confidentiality this one i put in in gray because this is more security uh, related rather than safety so it's a bit off topic but okay you get the idea and then you can make a lot of of losses you can get the whole loss uh, or list of losses sorry and then to these losses, you associate some hazards. Okay, so for example, hazard one would be incorrect or incomplete data. Okay, this, this could be some of the hazards that exist in our system. And then I uh, link to it all the losses that, uh, that you would affect. Okay, so incorrect or incomplete data would uh, affect loss one, loss two, those four, five, and six. Okay, and then I can do the list again of hazards like this. Okay, so this is really simple. The first step is just to define what is the boundaries of, of, our, of our study. <clears throat> then I will model the control structure, and that's that's where it gets interesting for 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 us. Okay, so you have to take some some inputs. So to have an idea about how, how you should model. So in this case, I just took this. Uh, diagram that we that we had to that we made for for the project just to understand how it works and so on and from this we can get to this kind of uh, control structure this is uh, again it's not like a complete one this is something i made quite quickly and there are probably some mistakes but at least we get we get the idea about how it works so in this case i would have uh, some uh, uh, people that are at the top okay so data entry technician uh, record validator, operator, admin, supplier, reliability model, all these people are interacting in our system. And all the arrows that are going down are uh, control actions, and all the arrows that are going up are some feedback. So for example, I can see that the data entry technician, he will enter some record to the record manager. And the record manager will send something back that there's some record completeness. And then I can do this for all the tools. So the record manager, I have analytics, FTA tool, I have key cloak uh, in the middle. Okay, but uh, the idea is that a lot of control actions are sent to the to the to the system, and the system will send back some 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 feedback. And this is the very basic control structure. It can it can be limited to to this uh, simple thing. And then the third step is to identify the unsafe control actions. So again, like I said, the control actions are the arrows that are going down. So in this case, I just took 
two of them just to make it uh, simple and not to take too long, not to go too much in the details. But for example, we can take the reliability modelers that models the FTA to the FTA tool. Okay, this is this is one of the control action. And the second one could be record manager sends the record to the Ava analytics dashboard. Okay, so this is the two control actions that I will uh, study. And so at the end, I get some table like this. So I get, I will write down the two control actions. So in this case, this is models FTA and sends record. Okay, that's the two control actions I just mentioned before. And then I said at the very beginning of this presentation that there are four ways for control actions to be potentially unsafe. If it's not provided, if the control action is not provided, if it's provided or if it's uh, applied too early or too late or it's stopped too soon or applied too long. And then we have to imagine the, the scenarios like this. So for example, not providing causing hazard in the case of uh, someone that wants to model the FTA. Okay, so it doesn't model the FTA. So does not create fault tree leading to a missed opportunity to identify system failures because it didn't, the person didn't model the FTA. And then I can link the hazards that are associated to this uh, uh, to this unsafe control action. And then again, I can do the, I will fill the, the table like this with providing all the different scenarios that exist like this. And again, you should do this for all the control actions here. I just did for these two here to make it simple, but you have to do it for the rest of the, uh, of the control structure. And basically that's it. You already have done step three. And the step four is to identify the loss scenario. So the loss scenarios, what is it? Is how do I get to the point where I can uh, have these unsafe control actions? And you have to look at your uh, stamp, so your control structure. And so just to make it a bit separate, I use two different colors. So the orange is used for like the first control actions that is on the right for so with the models uh, FTA and in red is uh, for the other control action, the sense record. So you can see um, on the right that what could be potentially uh, unsafe is of course the, the, the control action itself. So in orange, but also the feedback that are sent because, so what's the idea behind it? If I want to formalize the loss scenario, it would be if I get some bad data, for example, from the Ava analytics, and then I will use this data to model the FTA, then I have the scenario where I can send for, I could get to this uh, issue where uh, I created a fault tree, but based on incorrect data, and this could be, uh, this is potentially unsafe. Okay, and then I can do the same uh, on the red part where I will send some records, but they are because, uh, for example, one of the records that I entered is was wrong, then I will send again wrong uh, data to the Ava, uh, Ava analytics. And then this will have an effect on the FTA tool at the end. So basically, Again, this is, I made it uh, very simple just to to get the the principles about how it works. But this is the whole idea behind behind STPA. And even though it was made primary primarily for the for like engineering, like system engineering, <clears throat> this works very very well into the IT. At least I think in these kind of things. But here I really took a very zoomed in, let's say very specific case, but one of the strengths of STPA is that it's very abstract, right? In these boxes, when what what is a controller, what is a control process, is really, really abstract. We can put everything, anything here. You can put you can see that I've put some people, so record validator, but I can also put some tools, so record manager, and this and this you can abstract it and make it just one box and then plug anything you want into your analysis. So for example, I could have had it the whole of our organization and within this organization, I could have had done like another full analysis and at the very bottom, I could have put the whole aircraft and then again, do another analysis just about the aircraft and then interconnect 
everything together. So maybe one question that you have is, why should I do this for, for Ava, for example? Uh, why would I need to do this kind of uh, uh, safety uh, assessment on the on the system? Well, when you work in in aviation, in this case, so you you are under certain uh, standards, and one of them is the O one hundred seventy eight C, and basically this is some just standard that will make sure that your uh, tool that you are that you are using to assess the safety of your aircraft or whatever is it's itself is is uh, uh, safe enough so uh, that it meets some uh, requirements and can be certified so this is of course like the mandatory part but of course it's always good to do it even if you don't have to just for you to make sure that you make a safe product um so that's it that's it for the for the presentation so i wanted to ask you about your thoughts about this methodology i hope it was clear i can i understand that maybe it's a bit uh abstract and not so not so easy to to get into like such a short uh time but just to give like a few few uh, words before i end the 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 the, the presentation uh, I found out that it's really extensively, extensively used at Google. Like they really made a lot of presentations at the MIT uh, workshop, where MIT is, where they they created this um, uh, methodology. And uh, so, as a whole, STPA really helps to identify design flows, like in the, and really to give this holistic view about the whole context of our app and really addresses also human factor that maybe sometimes is a bit harder harder to get um, and just maybe for some cons like of course it cannot be used as unit unit testing uh, technique because many people sometimes are confused that you can use stpa to uh, design some some tests so maybe it can help you sometime for like some integration tests or these kind of things and still i guess can be a bit limited but for sure it will really not help you for for unit testing uh, of course this is time consuming i mean this is the proof that we didn't even do it for ava now i'm presenting it for ava but we ourselves didn't do it for for ava it could have been a good uh, case study to, to really do it but yeah, it really takes some time and you need some people to to do it and of course you need some domain experts this is the not only uh for stpa but for all safety uh, analysis in general like it's really really reliant on the expertise of the people that are that are doing it like of course the no the more you know about the system that you are um, studying the more the 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 easier for you it will be to to do the the analysis and uh that's it that's it for me so i hope uh it was uh, helpful for for you at least a little bit and if you have any questions uh, please ask me i have one question regarding mm -hmm. this last part uh here uh, th uh, this one yeah mm -hmm. i thought that one of the strengths of stpa or stump and related um, related uh, methodologies is that it is uh, actually more time efficient than other methods, other safety methods, other, other safety methodologies. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, that, that it somehow starts from from um, a like. Um, it focuses on on it starts from the top and it goes down mm -hmm. and it doesn't focus on all of the small details but it starts with what could go wrong and then it tries mm -hmm. to figure mm -hmm. out and go into the details from the top is it is it yeah. uh, is it wrong or is is it just what do you mean, I mean by time consuming here no de definitely you're right the the, the um, uh, one of the good point of stps that you can really use it 
start using it very, very, very early in the, uh, in the development because you don't need to know so much and uh, you can make it iteratively. And like the more you know about the system, the more you can uh, do it. But time co consuming in the sense that it will not um, it will not replace any other analysis. So it's really something that you have, that you have to put on top of what you already have to do. So it's time consuming in this way that like also for a very complex system, if you have your system already existing and then you are star starting doing your STPA, then it will take you a lot of time. But of course, in theory, you're right. If you started very, very early in the, in the development, this is not that time consuming. Oh, okay. So you don't have to, you, you, it, this is not replacing other safety uh, methodologies. It's just something complementary. Uh, I would say it, it would tend to, to replace some other methodologies. Okay. I, at least I'm talking for aviation aerospace. I'm less aware about how it is done in IT. I just know that now it's getting really, really trending even in IT to use STPA. Uh, so at least I can talk for aviation and, and aerospace that yes, it does it does not replace any anything else. It's just like complementary, yeah, as you said. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Max. It was super interesting. Uh, I have a bunch of questions. Uh, the first one mm -hmm. is probably quite easy. Uh, in this slide, you mean uh, the, what do you mean by the domain experts? Are, are they the are they the users of the system? Or <clears throat> domain experts. Uh, yes, for sure. So in in this in this case, uh, so of course you, you need different type of domain experts. So of course you need people that understand the system itself. Okay, so how it works, or really like the 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 Ava system. But you also need people that understand. Um, how it will be used and so on. So for example, if I take concrete example in aviation, if I want to do uh, uh, STPA on, I don't know, uh, wheel braking system, then of course I need some people that know about STPA, but I also know people that are experts in the wheel braking system so that we can really understand how it works and model it as clearly as we can. So domain expert is this, in this case, that you can really model with details the, the stamp, the control structure. Okay, I see. And usually, usually it involves different uh, people because the STPA can be multi cross discipline disciplinary. You know where you have people from the IT, people from the human factor, people from the organization. So different different type of of expert. Okay, I see. Uh, okay, uh, the second question is: uh, Do you have uh, complete analysis of the our project? Is it is it available anywhere? No, 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 no. It's really something that I did yesterday. Like uh, even this one will be very incomplete and probably full of mistakes. It was just to have some some materials to for the presentation. But yeah, no. Do you, it, do you plan on do you plan on creating it? It would be it would be interesting. Uh, I don't plan to do it because I will not really have time. But uh, okay. if you are really interested in do it, maybe we could we could try to do something. Yeah, I mean it's. It would be really interesting to take uh, take a real world system, like information system, and uh, its development, and, and try to do a, uh, an analysis mm -hmm. of that. Because, uh, mm -hmm. it's, as, as you said, like it's primarily used in you know like physical systems, like like mm -hmm. aircraft and stuff like that. But uh, information systems and their developments are systems as well so it makes sense to be able to do that and i would yeah. be really interested in seeing what, what actually can uh, we can find about even though we would be doing it probably exposed uh, for some existing system but uh, i i would be really mm -hmm. interested in seeing what, what we can yes. find out yeah i i agree that it would be interested especially that especially for IT, this is quite hard to find some case study either because uh, there's not so many studies and the ones that are made, they are quite sensitive. They don't really want to show it. So we on, only have claims that it works, but we don't know exactly like the details. So it would be interesting to do it ourselves. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, maybe you can discuss that on on the on the trend meeting because I, I mm -hmm, think it mm -hmm. would be quite relevant for for that. Uh, we, we can... De definitely, uh, it would be it would be interesting. Yeah.